So what's going on, guys? This is Uche and Joku. And, um, okay, <laughs> the sneaker principal. And I'm here to do a follow-up video on a video that I did um, a few days ago. Um, I don't think it's been a week yet. Um, actually, you know what? No, it's not, it hasn't been a week yet. It will be a week, I believe, tomorrow. And the video that I did was about why more black photographers don't utilize or use Leica cameras. And uh, that video has garnered so much conversation. It's not a viral video, but those of you who followed me recently and watched my videos, especially that video, know there's been a lot of comments in there. And I'll be honest with you, the most comments I've ever received from any video I've posted regards the topic on YouTube. But I thought it was interesting because um, I needed some time to process and really think about the responses that I received. Some were, you know, were quite informative and amazing and had me thinking. Um, others were straight out just disrespectful and um, were insensitive. And, uh, and I'll tell you this, I'm my, my feelings are not hurt. I'm, I'm a 47-year-old man, um, very well educated. Um, and I live in a world where I'm used to having either disparaging remarks made straight to my face, behind my back, or passive aggressively towards me because I find my spaces I find myself in spaces where um, historically I did not belong in. Um, yes, we're in two, we're in 2024, a lot has changed, but it's also a lot hasn't changed. Um, because I posted a video asking a question. And the question I was asking stemmed from my experience as a Leica um, camera owner and the fact that it is a camera that's, that is a conversation starter. Wherever I go, when people see that camera, the first thing they do is ask me about it. Um, I, own a, I own several Canons, I own a Fujifilm, and I don't get the same amount. I mean, for the Fujifilm, because it just looks, it looks pretty cool and looks very old school. Um, I do get questions about that, but I don't get the same questions about Canon. And when people see my camera, no one ever questions my ability to have it or afford it or use it or anything like that in that, in that um, stream of questioning. But with the Leica, as soon as they know, they see what it is. And for those who know what it is, there's always, always a double take, a double look and comments that I made that um, made me go, hmm. But those comments, I don't think they're meant to be hurtful in any capacity, but I do believe they shine a light on implicit biases that exist out there in society. It has nothing to do with like as a company. It has nothing to do, you know, with swaths of people. It's not a white thing or black thing, yellow, yellow thing or green thing. I just happen to be a black man. Um who is actually Nigerian. Um, I was born in Nigeria, but I was raised here in America. I've been here since middle school. And I'm again, I'm 47 years old, so I've been here for a very long time. And if you can see my name, you know it's not a typical name. Um, so most people are able to figure out that, you know, for the most part, who I am. Um, but again, it doesn't change the fact that, you know, my experiences are experiences that I think are very interesting. And I believe other people, it might be a small minority of people, but there are people out there who are like, huh, I felt the same thing. Or I've seen the same thing. So I tend to ask questions. My profession, I am an educator. I've been an educator for over 20 years. I am, I am a school leader in the South Bronx. Um, I've worked middle school, high school, pre-K through 12 as a school leader. And um, I am... Educated, And I'm saying this for those of you who made comments that questioned my intelligence. Um, because I'm because one thing I never do is I never question other people's intelligence because I don't know you. Um, but one thing I can say about me, I'm very easy to find. If you Google my name, Uche Njoku, U-C-H-E, middle initial L, last name Njoku, N-J-O-K-U, or you just simply Google the sneaker principle, you will find me. Uh, you will find out I attend University of Rochester, a film and media studies major with a, with a double degree, a double major in Africana studies. I also have a master's in urban education from Mercy University and uh, a uh, advanced master's degree in educational leadership from 
Teachers College, Columbia University. So um, I will probably tell you, I'm no dummy. And again, what I do, what I say, how I say it, is always intended to spark a conversation and hopefully something I can learn from. Um, so, uh, so yeah, th this is what this video has brought me to here. So now, over the past week, I've been thinking and and processing, and now um, I want to give you my reaction um, to various aspects of what I've learned from posting this video and what I've read in the comments. Um, number one, I want to thank you all who gave me positive and constructive feedback. Very important. Um, the the genesis of, of what I said came from, you know, just reflecting on my experiences as a holder of a Leica camera and the questions that came to me. Again, I'm going to say this, at no point in time that I was I disparaging towards Leica as a company. No, I, I love tradition. I love what, what, what they've created. Um, I would one day love to visit the museum there and the company because I think it's, it's something to be said about classic things. You know, I love the fact that there's certain things in the world, even though we have to shift with the where with where the world is going, that still retains a lot of the traditions that makes those particular things amazing. That's why I love my Rolex. That's why I love my Leica. That's why I love I love a good whiskey. That's why I love my collection of bow ties. There's certain things that are just so classic that they don't need to be um, gotten rid of. You know, they might be enhanced, but you know, with time things should get better. So, um, so the feedback that I received was was amazing. People who who had me think about um, some of uh, some photographers that were black that I had never heard of, you know. But it doesn't change the fact that it's still such a small minority, you know. And the reason that I first asked the question is because I was thinking about my students, you know, who love photography, who. You know, and I'll, I'll, I'll share this with you. I've actually allowed my students to take my camera around campus and take pictures. I've been in events where I'm like, hey, take it, go take some pictures. And they know what it is. I've taught them what it is. They know how much it costs, you know. But my thing is that money should never be a barrier to experiences, experiences that can change the trajectory of a child's life, especially when it comes to my students. So, um, what was I saying? So yeah, so the feedback I received on on um, on people who have made an impact and the work that Leica is doing to really um, expand itself through various communities. I think it's amazing. I think it is amazing. But again, I asked myself, the number of my students in my school who are learning photography, how many of them would have ever had the opportunity to touch one if I didn't have one, you know? So again, it's not a slight on Leica but it's also a question of society and how things are structured in a way where certain people would never get a chance, you know. So, um, so that was so that was that was um, the the one of the foundations of my thought process. And I also did give um, my my thought process on the whys, you know, the cost, the community. You know, no matter how many how many of us are in this community, it's still not a very diverse community, and understandably so. At the end of the day, before we talk about racial breakdowns of society, there is a much, much higher, much more powerful space, which is the economic breakdowns. If you are, if you are a have, if you are a have versus a have not, have and have, you know, let's be honest here, the haves tend to be polarized towards certain groups of people. Not to say that there aren't those who are in that space of different races, it's just that the numbers tend to get skewed a little bit, you know, and there's a true majority and a true minority. That's how the world is. And, and it's always been like that, and it will always be like that, you know. Um, but again, um, I learned a lot from the, from the feedback that I received. But then also there was... Um, some negative and hurtful um, responses. Um, those who call into question my intelligence, those who were pretty much, they did the whole LeBron shut, shut up and play basketball. I thought that was interesting because my thing is, if that's your response, um, I'm further pushed. And a lot of them I responded to extensively because my thing is, if you have the goal to respond to me, like, you know, pretty much, Go take pictures and stop, and st or, or you call me a racist. 
tell me why I'm a racist. Tell me why I don't have the right to express my thoughts. Tell me. Because some of you out there um, are what I call thumb warriors. You, you, you're right in here and you, you do all this, but present no real substance. So um, I, I ask of you, if you have a legitimate thought, speak it out. You know, like I did. I didn't just say, I didn't say, like it's a racist company and black people, they don't like black people. I didn't say that. Not even a little bit. But you have the gall to say, to call me racist. And I'll say this, it didn't just come from people that don't look like me. There were people of color, black people who had equal negative things to say. And again, I thought it was interesting. Why the personal attack? Why not a rebuttal that says, hey, here's another perspective that you might not know. But again, we live in a world where, you know, people have an eight seconds attention span. And I guarantee you the people who made those comments didn't watch the video all the way through. You know, some people probably just read the title and just jumped on and didn't listen, didn't watch the whole entire video. And the video wasn't even that long. It's one of my shorter videos. But, um, but yeah, that was something that I thought was, that was very interesting. Um, then the other thing too was, um, um, I think I retouched on about, about this, uh, clarifying the misconception that I was making a verbal attack on the company itself. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It, but if that's the case, I can I could attack every single company. I could attack Ford. I could attack Colgate. I could attack, you know, a slew of companies in America and around the world. Um, listen, I'm Nigerian. Um, what's the name of the company? <sighs> it, it slips my mind. Um, they were they were they were uh, Unilever. Unilever. They're they're the old Niger the um, the Niger I think Niger Delta Company whatever they were called which was originally the foundation of which Nigeria as a country was built it was actually a land grant that was owned by a company it was you know a whole entire country was really the resource of a company and after independence and everything else that company became eventually Unilever I can sit here and say if you use any product from Unilever you're a racist because those that country that decimated my that company decimated my country. But the thing is this, I am a capitalist by nature and I don't have to like it, but I do understand it. We've been doing this for millions of, for not, not millions, but we've been doing this for thousands of years. There's always going to be a group above another group. There's going to be other people who are always going to find ways to, to set themselves up to, to have access to resources that doesn't necessarily belong to them. You know, that's just the way the world works. But um, for me, you know, when I come back to talking about Leica, never did I ever say anything disparaging about Leica. If anything, I'm trying to figure out how, how to better budget to get other Leica uh, products. But again, you know, there was a mis misconception. And I think it came from the fact that people weren't willing to listen and engage in a conversation. They just saw a video title and ran with it. Um, One thing, one thing that's not going to change about me, I think that um, is important that I say this, is that I will always encourage the, um, dialogue. I'm a teacher. I'm an educator. I'm a fac facilitator of learning. I've been doing this work for over 20 years. I've worked with children from pre-K all the way to 12th grade. And I also mentor and coach graduate students. You know, And my thing is has always been it's very important that we're paying attention, we're listening, and we're contributing to the dialogue and the formation of new knowledge and experiences. That's never going to change. And I feel no way about my post other than I appreciate that it sparked such controversy, even if it was only in a small space, that it's, it's sparked such so much back and forth. And I thought, well, I'm reading it. I'm like, people going back and forth. I'm like, this is kind of kind of cool. You know, it's disappointing that some people are not willing to allow themselves to fully engage in the experience of watching the whole entire video before making commentary. But however, it's still allowed for 
an experience of dialogue. And it's, from, it's by dialoguing and engaging in, you know, um, high-level th thinking that we become better. We find ways to improve this as a society. Because I'll be honest with you, this video went beyond just camera and really reflected our values as people. And in some cases, our abilities to look beyond, you know, what's very easy to go with, which is race, and to really think about the human experience. Because again, it had less to do with, uh, with the MP11, I'm sorry, the M11P as a camera, it has to do with the experience of a human being. Um, even though it's connected to the camera, but it had less to do with the camera and less and more to do with us as a people, uh, how we engage each other. Um, so yeah, so moving forward, I'm gonna keep doing me. I'm gonna keep speaking my mind. Um, and I hope you continue to engage my content. Um, I wanna thank all of you for contributing. Those who who were just from me against, you're just like, ah, I'm so against what you said. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was just against your topic or your video title. Because I know for a fact a lot of you did not, a lot of people who had negative comments didn't watch the video. They just read, they just read the, the title, maybe watched a couple of minutes and, and felt that they had enough to contribute um, a comment. But then I respect those of you who um who said thank you. I might not agree with your perspective or understand it, but I've learned from it because it's something that I have never noticed before, or I'm in a space where it's not that's not that's not my experience. Those of you somebody mentioned about it out in California in LA that um there's a whole crew of black photographers who are who are like users and that's wonderful. I grew up in Los Angeles. I grew up in Inglewood, California, with Inglewood High School, lots of here junior high school in Inglewood. That's why I, I came up. But um, I've lived in New York now for a better part of my adult life now. And guess what? That was not, that hasn't been my experience. So, um, but I would love to connect uh, with folks in California, the like a community in California. Um, I think it's, it's amazing that such an amazing device can bring people together. Um, but at the same time, we shouldn't stop questioning um, what we see in society because how else do we get better if we don't engage in those types of conversations so um with that being said i want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be verbose in my commentary and 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 my response um to that video and the comments um i love it i love every i love i've enjoyed this experience and um, i will respond to every comment that's, that's popped up so far i had to take a little break i've been really busy at work it's towards the end of school year we have state st we have state math math, uh, math exams coming up for my sixth and seventh graders i'm sorry for my sixth seventh and eighth graders so we are um a crunch time right now but i'm going to make some time to respond to all the um the comments so but with that i want to thank you so much for your time for your energy for those of you who um who blessed me with the opportunity to speak to you through that video. And uh, with that being said, have an amazing rest of your day. We'll talk soon. Be well.